Hi, I'm Carmeny Jogo from the movie Sparkle, and you're watching The Trudy Haynes Show. You may know her as Mrs. Rodney Pete, but she's going to share with us by satellite healthy breakfast menus that she uses for her family and her children. So hang in there. And how would you like to be able to go to one medical center and get all of your health needs taken care of? Well, there is one in town, and I'm going to take you there to the Rising Sun Medical Center in the Northeast. And you just listen up because you're going to learn quite a bit about One Stop Health Center. And I bet you think you know all about the law. Well, if you want to find out how to use the law to your advantage and to protect yourself and your loved ones, attorney Sharon Wilson is going to be on hand. She's starting a series free, free right here on the Trudy Haynes Show to tell you how to use the law and what laws to use for your protection. But first, we're going around town, so come on, let's go. Just a few days ago, Mayor Nutter, Councilwoman Janie Blackwell, State Senator Vincent Hughes, joined Della Clark, President of the Enterprise Center in West Philly, and Mrs. Dorrance Hamilton, the big Campbell Soup philanthropist and the main supporter of this new edifice. In the ribbon-cutting ceremony for the grand opening of the Dorrance Hamilton Center for Culinary Enterprises. Now this becomes Philadelphia's largest food business incubator and centerpiece for local food system development. And folks, this center at 310 South 48th Street is in the heart of West Philadelphia and it is magnificent. A 13,000 square foot multi-use center designed both as an incubator of small food businesses and as a hub for community health and nutrition resources. And it's here for the community use. Two state-of-the-art commercial kitchens fitted for cooking classes and training on television. A multimedia learning center, both in person and distance learning in health, nutrition, and cooking. And retail spaces like the African restaurant already standing by to set up. This Center for Culinary Enterprises, or CCE as it will be known, has been five years in the making, a dream of Della Clark who spearheaded the need for this venue, and it will be available 24-7. With all that about health, don't forget, this show is starting a 13-week series called Fit and Fabulous with Vonda in just a few weeks. You met Vonda here on the Trudy Haynes Show recently, and she'll be telling you how to register for the free, and I did say free, segments that you can do in your own home. The Philadelphia Tribune paid tribute to the movers and shakers of 2012 at a gala ceremony at the new part of the convention center and drew a who's who in the audience crowd. They were called to the dais in groups, one group as people under 40 to watch, exceptional young men and women who are making an impact on our communities. Movers and shakers, the people who make things happen in our region beyond their individual position or title and another group called the African American Leaders, among a growing list of leaders who serve our communities by laying down pathways to success in business, social, and religion, activists for social changes. Robert Bogle, president and CEO of the world's largest African American paper, congratulated all the recipients and vowed to continue the paper's endorsement of future movers and shakers. After all, we have many to come. And there are a lot of seniors who have paved the way for even the current movers and shakers, but they were having a good old time at one of the monthly get-togethers hosted by Angela Brown, head of the new Cortland Enterprises, which was a kickoff event for her Life, Liberty, and Pursuit of Independence series for seniors who live at the new Cortland venues and their friends. Yours truly was MC, and the full house enjoyed some loosening up 
before the seminar on voter ID began. Representatives from City, State, and Mayor's Commission on Aging were there to give a lot of information about getting the proper voting ID. We even did a little Zumba, and we all enjoyed a delicious box lunch after the festivities. But the best part of all, it was all on the house. You should have been there. You know, Sharon, a lot of people think about law only when they're in trouble. Now, what kind of a law are, lawyer are you? Well, actually, I practice a state and tax law. So that's primarily issues dealing with wills, trusts, deeds, that sort of thing. I help people navigate that maze that occurs at the death of a loved one or disability of a loved one. So this is the kind of law that we need, but we really don't think enough about. No, part of the job that I find myself um, doing is really getting and encouraging people to think about these areas of the law more. Mm -hmm. So what is entailed? Well, today we were talking earlier about the whole voter ID and how folks are today over at City Hall really protesting for their right to be heard as others try to suppress their right to be heard through these voter ID laws. Wills, trusts, and deeds, those are the documents that really express your right. They allow you to be heard about those things that you want to happen, not during your lifetime, but after your death. So in other words, you can set up a formula of living, abiding by the law, but also using the law to your benefit. Exactly. When people talk about a will or when I suggest it to them, often the response I get is, well, I don't make enough money or I don't have enough assets. But really, Trudy, how much money do you need or how many assets do you have to accumulate before you deserve the right to be heard? Mm. You deserve the right to be heard from day one, from dollar one. And that's the what I try to get people to understand, to look at these documents not just about money and value, because really it's not about money. It's about letting others know how you want your assets to be distributed. It's allowing yourself to be heard even after your death. Well, okay, we do have to be concerned about money because a lot of people today have problems, money problems. So how do they protect themselves in these areas? Well, you know, a will is something you do not just to protect yourself, but to protect the other ones, uh, your loved ones around you. And that can include family, friends, charity, church. Pets. Pets, <laughs> that's right, e even pets. So... We draft these documents with an eye toward protecting others. You can decide whether your death is, spurs chaos or whether it's really an organized event that helps to transfer your assets. You can decide whether your death leaves your loved ones unprotected or whether you take any steps to protect your children or any special needs adults that may be in your life. You can decide whether or not your house or that you may own or any property that mm. you may own remains vacant and goes up for sheriff sale, or whether some person feels blessed by having that property at your death. So these are all of the things that we can do in a positive way if we decide to plan a little and execute some of these documents before we die. How soon should you be considering things like that? Because you know people die and have children, and there's always, not always, but a lot of times, disputes, and they lose their whole value of being together because of disputing over a house that mama left or daddy left. How soon should you get into those kind of things? Well, how soon should you start loving the people that are around you? Mm. People usually wait till a particular event happens, like yeah. maybe they uh, have a, a you know, disciplining or accident yeah. or, or some health issue, and that might spur them to action. However, it's often difficult to, to make those kinds of decisions and to plan when you're in either a medical or, or emotional crisis, debilitated yeah. state. Right. This sort of crisis management yeah. is not always the best way to proceed. So I want you to proceed as soon as you determine that you have something in your life that's of value, whether that's a child or a parent or a friend, as I said, or a church or something like that. You also need to proceed um, at a time before you become so debilitated that doing no, anything is becomes very difficult. Oh, if they don't understand, and if people are saying, oh, I never thought about that hearing you, 
how could they best inform themselves? Well, the first thing I would want people to do is to say to themselves, I need to plan so that I can make sure that the others around me and myself that I'm taken care of. Because there are also things you need to do for yourself and documents you need to execute for yourself to take care of, of you. And then I would love to have them give some thought to those things and to, at, very, at the very least, consult an attorney uh, who does practice in the States about sort of what I That's should you. be doing. Well, come see me. Well, I'd be happy did, to talk to you. Okay, and how did they get to you? Well, I understand you may be showing also my web mm -hmm. address here Which on is. this program, um, but you can reach me at s.wills at att.net, and our phone number is 215-985-4566. Call us. At the very least, schedule a consultation. Most of the time, these, these types of issues are resolved, but they begin with a conversation. And we need to have that conversation. Okay. Yeah. Now, you're going to be doing a series of law things on, on the show. What are some of the things you're going to be touching on? Well, I'm going to talk about five documents that are really underutilized, not just by folks in general, but particularly by women and people of color. We really need to use these documents. They're so easy to execute, but you do need to give them thought and you do need to put them in place. I want to talk to you about how a will, something as simple as a deed, a trust is not something that's just for rich people, but it's something that we can use to make our lives easier. Powers of attorney, living wills, just what are they and how mm -hmm. do we use them? But I also want to make sure that people understand that if they don't do anything, something's going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. The law has already made some decisions for you. Um, yeah. It's almost yeah. like they're voting for you. You know, you wouldn't mm -hmm. let anybody vote for you. They don't uh -huh. know your mind. Why would you let somebody make decisions about the most important things in well, your you life? Know, that's what I would like you to tell the folks, you know, that that uh, this is necessary for their own protection. Some things we have to do for ourselves. Right. Yeah. And so. you're right. It is necessary for their own protection. Because if you don't put into place the power of attorney, people who love you can't take care of you. Because they don't have the legal ability to and do that's so. that's even if you're married. Even if you're married. They want to make sure they want documentation. And the, and it would be nice if everyone lived these nice linear lives where everything was very simple, but that's not the way most of us live. We might be married, but we might be separated for yeah. years. Maybe our wife isn't the appropriate person, or maybe our husband really isn't the appropriate person to make decisions for us any longer. But the law doesn't look at any of that. It just says, who's next in line? Husband, wife, kids. Mm. Some of us haven't seen cousins, aunts, Sisters, and they siblings, come out of the and years, and droves, <laughs> and they and they are able to make these very important decisions for you if you don't have these documents on file. If you haven't thought about that, mm -hmm. if you haven't recognized that situation, and really taken the time to um, make some decisions about it. No, well, that sounds like good advice. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So we're going to be tuning in on Trudy Haynes' show frequently to hear. Attorney Sharon Wilson. Well, Thank you very point. much. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Okay. It's Timothy Green's first day at school. What's in there? He's well, about just to fall anything over. Anything he might need. There's a box of tissues on the bottom and some band-aids. There's a whole first aid kit, actually. Mom, I can handle it from here. You don't have to be perfect. Have a great day. That's too much pressure. Have the day you have. To be a perfect parent. There are two people in the world who want you more than anything. They'll make some mistakes, but they will love you more than you can ever imagine. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. A medical center is a medical center until you come to the Rising Sun Medical Center and you'll find out why I say that. Let's go in. I am right now, I'm the, um, the, both the chief executive officer and the director, the administrative director at, at Rising Sun Medical Center. Uh, my function involves uh, working with the other physicians to help coordinate services. I give uh, advice in terms of setting up certain systems in the office. I overlook the overall management of the office, and I speak with the other physicians who are my treating physicians, clinicians in the office. Um, we, we're about two years old. As of, in fact, as of May of this May 3rd of this year, we will be officially two years old in this office.